All right. Welcome back, Webheads. What's up? We're here for another week. This week we got a and we got an Iron Man story this week. And sorry, I jumped the gun. I uh, forgot to introduce myself. I am Steven. I'm here with my co-host, my brother, uh, DeMarco. D'Amico. Whatever you want to call him. Some people call him DeMarco. I call him Mark. Uh, I'm sure other people call him different things. Actually, does anybody call you anything other than DeMarco or Mark or DP? Yeah, that's pretty much it. Well, I guess you could be called worse. I got three. I got three names. <laughs> DP used to be a uh, more of a one where kids be like, "Oh, your name's DP," and you know, it's like they finally realized yeah. it. Now it's just like, okay, like <laughs> is, is that is that what? Is that what you what you but got? Do you remember? Do you remember a time where like somebody said that to you and you and like in your head you're like I don't know what the hell that is. Uh, probably like middle school. Cause <laughs> you know what? <laughs> we'll get started, but I have a story about middle school and not knowing something that somebody called me. So uh, <laughs> let's just get started <laughs> first. <laughs> All right, so in school, in in middle school, right? It was our middle school was seventh and eighth grade. Mm. So there was this kid. He was he always made fun of people. He like people were cool with him, but he was just always making fun of people. And it, it went like a year, or maybe like six months or so throughout the school year. He wasn't making fun of me. We didn't even interact with each other. And then one day he like he he was sitting with one of the the guys that I was kind of cool with like we weren't best friends or anything we were like we kicked it every mm. once in a while and then he was like <laughs> I'm sorry for being too vulgar here guys but he was like hey do you have a scrotum and th- and this is like <laughs> like still 7th grade like I don't know shit about shit and then <laughs> <laughs> I would think you would know well, yeah, that th- this was not a, a topic of conversation with me and my friends and this is not, and we they hadn't taught us any of this shit in school at this point. And it, <laughs> this is very clearly not a conversation I had with my father either. So <laughs> he asked me, and then I, I just like looked at him for a second, and I felt like he was trying to like catch me and like make fun of me in some way. And I like in my head I was like, let me let me just say no because I have no idea what the fuck he's talking about. And then. Maybe he'll just leave me alone. I, he was like, oh, do you have a scrotum? I was like, no. And then <laughs> him and the guy that I was actually <laughs> kind of cool with just started busting up laughing. And I'm like, fuck, man, what the hell are they talking about? My face got all red. And, and then they went to the other side of the classroom, started laughing over there. I was like, fuck, I said something wrong. It was it was all bad. I didn't, And then I still hold a grudge. I, I, I transferred schools in high school from Hayward to Union City. And he was still going to Hayward High when I was there. And then I transferred schools, and then this fool showed up mm. at, at Logan. Like, not even four <laughs> months after I got there. All of a sudden, I'm walking the hallways, and I see him walking the hallways. And I'm like, what the fuck, man? Come on. <laughs> and then he tried to be, like, buddy-buddy with me, and, like, all oh, cool. I was like, nah, man. I'm holding this grudge as long as I possibly can. <laughs> and that was my embarrassing Damn. middle school story. And- I have more, but I'm not going to get into it. <laughs> so what you been up oh, to? Oh, man. So, um, if you guys can't tell by my voice right now, I'm kind of congested. Um, I just got past <laughs> a little bout of COVID, me and my little family here, and <laughs> that shit kicked my ass, man. Uh, that was it. It was a few days. It wasn't the first couple of days. wasn't bad. It was just like some coughing, some congestion, a little bit, and there was like two or three mm. days, like right after that, where it was like I was congested. I can't get anything out. I can like every time I sleep. The congestion just like moves to one side and I can't breathe. I turn over, it moves to the other side, I can't breathe there. I can't sleep on my back. And then Zara had a cough as well, a pretty bad cough. So then we were spending nights up with her 
Because it, it sounded like, when sometimes it sounds like when she coughs, like she can't breathe when she's doing it. So, we, like, mm. every time she would cough, like, me and Fairy will both hop up. We're sitting there with her, making sure she's okay, trying to get the cough to go away. It was all bad. It was a, and, I, and I'm vaccinated, so it, it was, I thought it was, I, I for sure thought, like, this whole time, like, okay, if I catch it, I'm usually pretty good with getting sick. Like, I don't use, like. When I get the cold, the flu, whatever, like, I'm usually pretty good at, like, I might have a day or two where it's pretty bad, and then after that, I just roll through it. And most of the time, I I don't even Mm. get sick in the first place. So I thought, like, I should be good. I should be okay, but, (laughs) nah, man, if you guys guys can stay away from getting it at any point, or just because you got it once and you didn't have the symptoms... Man, just put that mask on when you go in the store. This shit fucking sucks, dude. Fucking sucks. <laughs> but yet, keep that in please, mind, everybody. I, yeah, I don't. I, I and I'm okay. I had tested negative three times in the last two days, so I'm not. Mm. I don't. I'm still congested, obviously, but um, I'm not uh, symptomatic from what the doctor says. And yeah, like I said, I've tested negative yeah. three times. Ferial's tested negative now. And Zara's tested negative two or three times, too. So, COVID-wise, and, like, I guess being contagious, we're okay. But there's, like, yeah, I've tested negative three times, but I've been congested for, like, four days straight now. And all I'm doing is just coughing stuff up. Zara's been negative, and she still, like, still has the cough pretty bad. It's it's gone away over the last couple days, but it's been pretty bad. And I'm sitting here, I couldn't do shit. I can't go anywhere. I can't, <laughs> I could, all I could do is just watch TV and then and watch whatever Zara is watching. <laughs> you didn't play? You haven't played any video games? Uh, I played Mar- Super Mario Strikers a lot. Mm. Um, I I see. I got better. I've I'm, I beat the first was it six or seven tournaments that they have. I beat all those mm. pretty pretty well. Clear <laughs> clear <laughs> the brackets out. That and then. So you beat the those first seven tournaments, and then it starts. I guess they get more difficult, and starts them all over again. And mm. then I, I didn't know that. I thought just like I would beat the seven, then I'm kind of done with the game. I can just play how I want to play. And then I yeah. it brought them all back, and it was like now they're more difficult. And I was like, no, nah, I don't want to do this. <laughs> it was too much. <laughs> oh, I played this other game too. Um, What's it called? I think it's called Limbo. It's like a oh, is that the yeah, like a side scroller. Okay. Yeah, that game yeah. was pretty fun. It's short. I think I had that or I played it before. It's pretty good. That there's that one, and then they have another. The same company has another game. Oh no, the one I played was Inside. And the mm. the that yeah. same company made the game Limbo, but they're but they're both side scrollers. Yeah. So I played Inside, and Inside was really good. It it was it it felt kind of short, but I think it's because I didn't I didn't have anything else to do, so I was just playing like every day for like three <laughs> days, and then I beat it. But it's it's good. It's fun. You, you got to get that Ninja Turtles yeah, game. Yeah, I was going to buy that one, too, but I just didn't. I was messing around with the Limbo one and then Super Mario Strikers. But I think next week I'm going to get that one. Yeah. So what have you been up to? I've seen you once, but I haven't really talked to you. Nothing much. Yeah, I haven't really been doing much. Um, Just work. I mean, it's the same shit I always say. Just work and this and that, you know. Like, That's what really says. like changed with me. It, it's so annoying because it's like <laughs> it's like you've done stuff, but it's, it's like it doesn't in the grand scheme of like your life and what you do every day. You doing the same stuff every day is just sort of like what pops up in your head when you yeah. Know, that's when you that's do a, it. Like at the risk of sounding uh, corny here. It's that thing where it's like, oh, they say, everybody says, oh, it's the same shit, different day, same shit, different day. And then, like, a year later, yeah. you realize, like, how much has changed. And you're like, whoa, <laughs> wait, yeah. wait, what did I, what did I do? 
and it's just yeah yeah so i haven't i haven't done much um i'd say most exciting thing is i applied for a new job at the time mm-hmm. of this recording um i guess when does this come out uh, next week tuesday tuesday I guess I can just say it. No one, <laughs> no one I work with listens to this. Uh, but I, I did get the job that nice. I applied for, so hopefully I can start that in August. Um, what else? Yeah, I mean I haven't read too much. Uh, mostly just, you know, I'll read a little bit mm. here and there. Um, I'm reading the. I don't want to say the new Miles Morales, uh, but I think like the more recent, uh, yeah, run of his of Spider Man, and I just bought the collection of. I just I was looking for like the the very number one of the Ninja Turtles, uh, most recent stuff, but Barnes and Noble has like the most like random selection of. Yeah. Like collection stuff so I couldn't find it but I bought like the I guess there was sort of like a an end of a story arc and then it kind of like mm-hmm. restarted so I, I'm picking up from there and that, that's been pretty good so far I haven't finished check it out, uh, the but... website Midtown Comics not sponsored mm-hmm. by the way but I if you guys want to call me that's fine um <laughs> but they have yeah Midtown Comics has like it's a I guess it's just a I don't I think it's in New York but it's like a big ass comic book store um but yeah, yeah their their website seems pretty it's pretty well organized it's pretty easy to find stuff on there yeah I was thinking I was trying to figure out where else to look cause I, it was like looking on Amazon and all those other places but then I look at it and I'm just like, oh, I don't really need it right now. And then I just keep pushing it off. Because I've been looking for those for like months. And I just haven't felt like spending 20 bucks on on it. So, But eventually I will. Yeah. Oh, oh shout out to um, Gabe. Our guy, uh, Gabriel, who's been on the podcast before. We were supposed to... The right when we caught COVID, that Friday... I was supposed to go hang out with Gabe. We were just going to go hang out, kick it, whatever. Um, but then mm-hmm. uh, I had just been contacted that morning and said that I was exposed. So I was like, let me not put this guy at risk. Um, so I had to cancel. <laughs> and then um, he, uh, he he came out my way the next day because he was going to uh, to lunch, dinner, whatever. Uh, with some of Ferial's family, and um, mm-hmm. he <laughs> he said, "Oh, I got a gift for you." And then uh, he stopped by the house <laughs> and he he stayed his distance. He didn't get close, um, but <laughs> he said he went to Crush Comics in Castro Valley, and he told the guy, "Like, hey, I have a, mm-hmm. I have this friend that like just doesn't fuck with DC whatsoever, like at all." <laughs> and do you guys have anything that can like convince him otherwise or show him that it's not as bad as he thinks it is and he said the guy got like super excited showed him like four or five different things and then he he brought me this big ass like trade paperback it's like it's got to be at least an inch and a half thick of like this story um that's that's supposed to turn turn me around so he he said it if it, if this doesn't do it then it's probably not going to be anything. So uh, I'll keep you guys posted <laughs> on how that goes. I st- well, what's, what, what's the um, I've only gotten, like, I haven't even finished, like, got one book of it yet. So I, I couldn't honestly tell you. Uh, is it, like, is it, like, a an event? Or is it, like, a Batman um, or Flash or something? kind of everybody. Let me grab it real quick.
Alright. So it's called uh, DC The New Frontier. But look mm. how thick this thing is. <laughs> so. <coughs> I like the art. <coughs> yeah. <coughs> Sorry. Yeah, the art's dope. Yeah, I like that. It's like classic 60s, but like with like a modern yeah. paint job. So, uh, let's see. Yeah, I'm not 100% sure what it's about, honestly. But <laughs> I'm for, for Gabe buying it, I'm going to get through it just to say I did it. But <laughs> uh, but nobody hold your breath because I'm not I'm not gonna say all oh, this will turn me around because I don't think it will. <laughs> but I, I hopefully this shows me some uh, some new characters that I haven't seen before. Or some shows me something other than just Batman beating up criminals. <laughs> but uh, yeah. Oh, you know you know what I did yesterday. I, I finally beat um, Legend of Arceus or Arceus. I I still haven't finished it yet. Yeah, I just I beat the the main story, and so now I gotta do all like the. Okay, yo, no, I I finished the main story. I haven't. I've been going. I was going through the side quests, and those are what I haven't mm. finished yet. But. Uh, I just I don't know why I haven't gone back to it yet. It's been like a month and a half, maybe. It's right. I mean, for me at least, like I, I I don't go back to like if I can beat the story. Me going back to like the to play the game, especially like a Pokemon game, they're kind of like, mm. like grindy, you know. Like all you're doing is just, especially with this one, like to like really beat the game, you got to do. Like all the poke, like Pokédex entries, or at least get to like level ten. Yeah, or some of them. So you're just watching them do moves, or like feeding them, or anything. So it's like that grind, yeah. and then trying to catch them. And, yeah, like I'm usually. Yeah. We've talked about this before, but I'm I am a person who likes to uh, really complete a lot of stuff if I can. <laughs> but the mm. minute I a thought comes in my head it's like I don't want to finish this I'm just done I don't care what percentage I'm at I finished yeah. the story I'm good whatever so I just haven't gone back to it because there's yeah there's yeah I think there's like a, a, a side quest after the main story where you gotta go find all the legendary Pokemon and that's the one mm-hmm. that I was doing last and then I did it one day, and then the next day I was like, no, I don't want to play today. And then that was like two months ago. And I haven't gone back. I think I'll I'll probably just go back just to try to, like, catch everything or as much as I can. I used to, like, Pokemon, I used to try to get everything. There was one, I think it was Ruby and Sapphire. I, for the whole, like... I think it was the national Pokedex. I was three... Oh, no, it was, like, the, the main Pokedex mm. in the game. I was three Pokemon away from, like, completing that. And then I think you get the national decks from that. And that was... I think I put in, at that point, like, 200, maybe close to 300 hours in just trying to, like, play that. And then the game got fucked up and I lost everything. I, I did that but, on Sword, on Sword and Shield, too. I I got all mm. all I got every Pokemon on the regular Pokédex and then you get the yeah, expanded one after that and I was I was rolling through it but then same thing I, one day I was just like I'll oh, I'll finish tomorrow I'll play tomorrow and then yeah, a couple months go by I play it again and then I stop and then it's been, I haven't touched sword and shield, or sword, did I get sword or shield? I don't know. Whichever one I got, I haven't. You didn't get yeah, shield. Whichever one I got, I haven't touched it for probably like a year. Yeah, me either. 
There's no point. It's just after a certain point, it just feels like there's no point. I'm just all I'm doing is just doing this for myself, yeah. and I don't even care that much. <laughs> <laughs> but today we got a we have an Iron Man story today. Yeah, classic. classic. This one, if you're if you're a big comic book guy or a person, I'm not going to say guy. If you're a big comic book comic book person. Um, you've probably heard of this story. Uh, more commonly known as Armor Wars. But the actual name of the story is Stark Wars. So I don't I don't know where Armor Wars... I think... I don't know where it really came from or anything, but... It's called Stark Wars. And it's essentially... Tony Stark finds that a lot of his enemies or just villains in general are using uh, some of his technology in their suits and he is determined to stop that at any cost yeah, it's funny because like a lot of the um, the other Marvel media like shows stuff like that like we have the Armor War shows uh, mm. coming out probably next year or something like that with Don Cheadle um, yeah and what anime? Uh, I watched Iron Man Armored Adventures, uh, the animated mm-hmm. show, and they have uh, like a. It was either two or three episode arc that was titled Armor Wars. So it's, I. Yeah. It's called Stark Wars, but no one. It, that, I don't know what happened where everyone is like, oh, people will really know this if we just call it Armor Wars. I mean, Armor Wars does sound a lot better than Stark Wars. Like, that just sounds like, I don't know, it sounds like a boring, like, book or something. Yeah, I'm not changing the title here. Like a novel. Armor Wars sounds more, like, intense. Yeah, I'm looking forward to the show, too. Oh, something. Yeah, uh, so am I. I'm curious to see, like, based off of what, what I read in the books, um... And, you know, just, like, all the armored characters and everything. So I'm curious to see if they're going to have as many armored, pe- like, characters. Or if it's just going to be, like, more, uh, you know, like, one or two characters yeah. or something like that. Or, like, a, or maybe they might go the Iron Man 2 route and just get a bunch of, like, drones that are, like, yeah. armored, in you the, know. In Which the I hope they don't, because that would be kind of boring. Show, they, J- Justin Hammer just made like a basically a, a drone army full of like Iron Man suits and just sent them out so I yeah. hope that's not it but I don't know with six with six episodes yeah that'd be super it's boring it's hard to tell what they're gonna do yeah speaking of before we jump into the book um Miss Marvel yeah. just wrapped up uh, I mean at this point I think it's a TV show. We can go into spoiler territory by the time this comes out, right? Yeah, I mean, it's it's about a week out, so it should be fine. So what did you think of the ending? I loved it. It was good. I, I, yeah, I, 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 I like the, that they're changing her... her not her origin, but like her, where her powers come from. Yeah, I, and I'll let you finish. Yeah, I was, I was just when they played the little tune in the the little X Men tune when they when he said that, I was like, damn, like are they really like, they're really driving the fact like, hey, this is a mutant, like, and I don't, it's. I'm I'm cool with it. I don't really they know the Inhumans are cool, but mm-hmm. excuse me, sorry. You can't you can't bring the Inhumans in at the same time as the X Men. It doesn't work. Yeah. And then 
yeah, I, I loved the last episode. I I thought they were gonna bring Carol in earlier in the show in the in the episode. Mm-hmm. Um, just because I I know in the comic book she Miss Marvel or sorry Captain Marvel shows up to kind of help with the fight that's at that's going on at the school. Um, mm. So I thought maybe they might bring her in a little bit earlier. But now nah, that that whole last episode was really really good. The whole show was uh, really well written, and mm-hmm. they they've they wrote they wrote her as a character like perfectly. Like it wasn't besides how she got her powers. Like it's it's almost like they took her from the pages and just threw her in the show. Yeah. Yeah, I thought it was really cool. I thought, I mean, the the whole the, the like you said, the whole show itself was amazing. I just like that she, uh, Iman Vellani. I thought I just thought that she was just like she hit it mm-hmm. like home run the whole the season, whole. just from like the not only her acting but just like little quirks that she would do. You know, like, I felt like I was watching, like, an actual kid, like, kind of learn that she has powers yeah. and, like, the stupid things, like, a kid would do with their powers, it's, like, in terms of, like, oh, I'm going to become a superhero and I'm a train and this and that. Like, it's kind of what we didn't get with the MCU's yeah. Peter Parker. But I can kind of see, like, okay, yeah, these are both still kids, like, kind of learning to become who they're who they're going yeah, to be but it's, you know? even with like peter parker too it's like every time we've ever seen him get his powers it's always like he's never seen a superhero before so it's like he has his powers and now he has to start learning how to use it what's he going to use it for all this stuff like she's grown up in a world with superheroes and she she idolizes yeah. captain marvel and then gets the powers, and then we get to see her, like like you said, try to figure out how to use it. And she, yeah, yeah she killed it. it. It doesn't hurt that she was like in love with Miss Marvel from the beginning, and this is like her favorite mm-hmm. character, and she actually knows her Marvel shit. But yeah, that is that is true, and it's like. Yeah, you don't really see that. Like, you, when you see, like, the, the character or the actors, you know, get announced or, like, the first interviews, it's like, yeah, you know, they may have, like, oh, yeah, I read comics as a kid or, you know, I, I did a lot of research for the role or whatever, which is fine. I'm, it's not like you have to be a, a huge fan just to be, you know, the part, but, like, the fact that she was already, you know, down for it she already knew everything and you know it's just like okay that's what we want to see it's like because i feel like that's somebody who's going to stick around Mm -hmm. for a long time and become like a pillar for the universe like kind of like robert downey jr was and chris evans and all them like i think she's like the first like real step in this new phase of moving away from them she's like the first like strong pillar that we're gonna have in terms of sticking with the universe and like being becoming a bigger. Yeah, I part wouldn't be. I even wouldn't be surprised if like later on, like not even too far later on, but later on, she like starts working on like behind the scenes stuff. Like, yeah, I was thinking that too. Because she, yeah, she knows her shit. Like, I don't. Yeah. I don't see why she she wouldn't want to do that eventually or be asked to do it yeah produce direct whatever like i I can totally see her being somebody like i was every time like at every like interview i'm like she can be like but she has potential to be like the next kevin feige if she wanted to you know i wouldn't be yeah like i feel like she has enough knowledge i wouldn't be surprised at, at any of that honestly 
I, I, in fact, I would hope yeah. for it. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, there's one more thing, but we'll get into it uh, next week. I want to talk about how everybody's uh, complaining about how slow things are happening in the MCU. That it's too long yeah. of a conversation to have right now. But yeah, we got to talk about that because there's been nonstop complaining. Okay, it's it. funny. It's funny you say that because I just talked to surprisingly like my coworkers about like the state mm-hmm. of things right now. So it'll be interesting. It'll be fun yeah, to talk we'll, about. We'll that. save that for uh, next week's episode. But yeah, we got to. Yeah. But, All right. So we'll jump into our aforementioned armor war okay. story. Uh, let's see. Let me pull up my stuff. And this was nine issues. I believe eight. Okay. It could be nine, eight or nine. I think it it went from two twenty five to two thirty one. Yeah, I think so. I think or two to the, no two thirty two, okay. I think something like that. Yeah, I've only read um, half. Uh, yeah. So, I sent you have a list of what the issues are. So you read that for the the story, but Marvel Unlimited has a different list a little bit, like a pre. They have like a prequel mm-hmm. part. So I read like the the prequel part oh, yeah. to it, and then I was gonna finish the rest of it, but I never got around to it. So this is gonna be new for me. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, we'll go ahead and start off uh, issue 225. And so uh, we start with Iron Man. He's doing some tests for the military. Uh, They're going to have like a fundraiser soon. So they're just running some tests to kind of see like what they're going to show off to the people there. And it it was weird because like they say that they're doing a fundraiser. But I'm like, you guys are the military. What are you fundraising for? What are you selling, beef jerky? (laughs) So like... Tony's flying, or Iron Man's flying around, like, dodging missiles, this and that. Um, at this point, people still don't know that Tony and Iron Man are the same person. They think Iron Man is just an employee yeah, of Stark. the only person that seems to know is Rhodey. And so, yeah. And so they, uh, they do these tests, and later that day, uh, Tony's in his lab. Like, uh, there was a villain named uh, mm-hmm. Force. Uh, who had, like, a suit of armor and everything. And uh, previous issues, Iron Man and him fought it out, and then he forced be- gave up his life of villainy and just became an yeah, old person. he was working for Justin So Hammer Tony... Yeah. So Tony uh, is examining his armor, like, taking it apart, just seeing, like, how it works and everything, and he notices that some of the, cir- the circuitry is the same as his armor, which may not... Excuse me, it may not be that big of a deal, but Tony makes his armor from, like, scratch, and, like, the circuitry he uses is, like, his own. Like, that's how it makes it so advanced. Like, he, he's one of the Earth's smartest people. He knows when he sees his yeah, own technology. And he never and so he starts, any of it either, so, like, none of it should be out yeah, in the world. because he didn't yeah. think he needed to. Yeah. So he starts freaking out. He starts tearing up his lab because he's for sure thinking that there's like a bug or like something in this lab, like that somebody's been like watching what he's doing and stealing his secrets. So he's tearing up the lab and then Rhodey comes by and it's like trying to figure out what's going on. And Tony tells him, hey, my technology has been stolen and it's up to him to get it out of the hands of these these villains because every person that they kill is on Tony's head now like and uh, and so he he becomes determined to get it out of people's hands and so uh and just for so everyone knows I'm skipping a lot of Rhodey's like story in this because in the beginning it's pretty much just him being Tony's sidekick and going on dates with the woman it really doesn't add a, too much a to the woman story. That he so works with, mind you, workplace yeah. romance. I don't think so. <laughs> T- 
Tony Stark's the boss. He he doesn't care about <laughs> HR issues and shit like that. He's like, yeah, come work for me. There's What's we don't have any of that me? boring stuff that holds you I down. I know his secrets. <laughs> you think he's gonna fire me? <laughs> and so, uh. Tony calls uh, Force, a.k.a. Carl Walker, a.k.a. Clay Wilson. Uh, he changed his name to hide from Justin Hammer. So he calls him into his office, and he asks him, like, where he gets, where he got his armor from. And he says that he built the more, like, basic stuff, but all the advanced stuff came from Hammer technology. So at that point, Tony's like, okay, Justin Hammer is the one supplying everybody with all of the technology that's in that you know his technology uh so even now so now even more tony is frustrated he's like trying to figure out like what to do like how is he going to go ahead and get this out of people's hands and so at this day the next day uh he's at the military fundraiser and he can't do anything but think about his solutions like how did it happen what's he going to do he's become obsessed pretty much on this problem and he kind of isn't paying attention and he destroys some multi-million dollar tanks in front of everybody (laughs) at the fundraiser which everyone seems to be cool with at least the people there but all the military people are not happy everybody in the crowd is just cheering like yeah yeah uh, yeah yeah (laughs) there's like yeah yeah. but all the military people are just like (laughs) there's like Like, yo what the hell like you're just supposed to test the strength of these tanks, of dollars, not man. destroy them. <laughs> and those are our only two <laughs> prototypes. And <laughs> Iron Man's just like, oh, don't worry about it. I'll, I'll have Tony Stark pay you guys. Like, yeah, and real you guys quick, are good. He, he says that he and says then, stuff like that a lot. And in the little prequel part of the story, this man was hours mm-hmm. away from being like bankrupt and broke again. Like hours away. <laughs> yeah, at this point, he started his own. He he started in his own company, Stark Enterprises, but it's like very much in his infancy. Yeah. And he just bought like, another company. It can go wrong yeah. very quickly. Yeah. So it, everything. This is a terrible time for all of this to start happening. Um, where was I? Oh yeah. So at this point, you begin to notice that how obsessive uh, Tony's nature is of. He just, like we just talked about, he just started a new company, just bought a new company. Um, there's all this stuff, like, he's trying to do to start his company up and get it going, but then he finds out all of his technology is being stolen, and so he puts everything on the back burner and just lets, like, the heads of those departments deal with it, even though they still need him to, you know, sign off on things and get things going, but he's just like, nah, like, we'll deal with that some other time. And so... uh after that, he you can't say no. yeah, he goes on a date with his girlfriend, Brie. She's a movie star. And so they go to the premiere of her movie called Dark Angel. And it's like this almost like platoon, um, you know, like a classic like war movie. Tons of action and everything. Um, but while they're watching the movie, Tony starts to like feel uncomfortable because there's a lot of death and killing and blowing explosions and stuff. And all he can think about is all the people that have been harmed from his technology being in the wrong hands. So he leaves. Uh, and then uh, the next day, he and Rhodey decide to take a trip to Stark Enterprises uh, subsidiary. Uh, and then they talk to a guy named Abe mm-hmm. Zimmer, who Tony helped before. And Tony comes to him with the, asking if he can help him with the plan that he has. And so Abe's like, yeah, I'm down. You know, you helped me before, so I'm, I'm down for whatever you need. Uh, but they also need one more person. So they go and uh, they find Scott Lang, Ant-Man, because they need him for his shrinking abilities to kind of help with the plan. And uh, Scott, he's trying to be on, like, the right side of the law at this point. And Tony's just like, I understand that, but I need your help. <laughs> I need you to be a criminal. <laughs> you can go to you can go to jail and you can lose custody of your daughter but uh what's more important is my armor not falling in the hands of other people so you know suck it up and yeah, say yes good. to me <laughs> it really is like he has like no care no, for anybody Scott else just moved in with and his then, daughter like 
They're starting a whole new life right now. Yeah, he's starting a business. Like, <laughs> and Tony's over here waving money in front of him, just like, hey, I'll take care of your business if you help me. <laughs> you could go to jail. And then, <laughs> if we go, if this goes wrong, you can go to jail. But if it goes right, you can have. Don't worry, business. I'll make sure somebody and not to worry about money. The foster care system in America <laughs> is amazing. <laughs> and so Scott's like, "Fine, I'll do it." And then the plan is to go to Hammer Industries and create like a, a diversion uh, to allow. Abe to hack in and um, steal the names of all the people that Hammer had given the technology to. And so it's it's actually a pretty quick and easy plan, it yeah. sounds like. <laughs> or at least it seems like from when you read the panels. Um, so Scott goes in and trips like an alarm and then Tony just flies into the building and like <laughs> pretty much shoves it to cause like a, a mini <laughs> earthquake. And then that sets off like an alarm, but it gives them enough time to download the names of of the people with the suits or with the uh, technology. Um, and so the first villain that they that Tony or Iron Man decides to go after is Stilt Man. Uh, if you don't know who Stilt Man is, he's essentially a guy with a suit of armor and all his his legs just grow. Oh, what a, what a power! The, they just it's like an elevator. And he can get to tall buildings, and that's pretty much it. Like, he, he has no real powers or anything. It's just that he can get really high or really low. What are you get doing really high or really low? Like, it's going to be a... You're breaking into... Go be a firefighter or something. Like, <laughs> Typically, he's a Daredevil villain and a Spider-Man villain, but because now he, Tony knows that he has his... Technology in a suit. Iron now Man goes after Iron him. Man villain. And, yeah. and Stilt Man is not ready for that. So in the middle of one of his heists, he's trying to break into this building and Tony shows up or and tells him, you know, like, you're, you're finished. And he's just like, the first thought is, I'm not in the same league yeah. as Iron Man. I remember to the NFL. I'm on Pee Wee football, <laughs> and so he tries to escape. He loses his stilts and just tries to like use. He has boosters in his suit to fly away, but <laughs> Iron Man smacks him in the head with his own <laughs> leg and knocks him down. And then uh, Tony had built like these like neutralizers. Uh, they're like these square like technology mm. pieces or whatever is that he puts on the suit and it'll essentially destroy the the technology that he uses and effectively making it non-useful but also impossible for anybody to replicate after that that, that doesn't make and any so, sense but all right. <laughs> yeah it's weird and then so he takes stilt man out that's the first villain that he's able to neutralize with it um, he then goes to Colorado where they're having like a, a soldier, soldier of valor c- conference or something. <laughs> I don't know what it is. It's like a, it was like a, some sort of conference where like, I guess really people who are in the military are, are now like in competitions to prove who's <laughs> the best soldier. I was the best soldier. Soldier. It was a soldier. <laughs> it was a soldier of fault fortune convention. <laughs> They don't get into specifics on what's going on there, but there is a villain there named uh, the Mauler, um, and he uses in his suit. He uses the same technology, and Iron Man shows up and says, "Give me the suit, or we're going to fight." And he just like, "All right, here's the suit," and Iron Man is just like, "You don't. That was pretty easy. You're not going to fight." And he's just like, "Nah, like, <laughs> no, like, I know take it. I don't are, care." Like... <laughs> <laughs> He just, he's like, yeah, it made me a lot of money, but I'll just steal another one eventually, so <laughs> you can have this one. He's he doesn't seem too too caught up in it, and so after that, Iron Man is like, all right, the next villain we're going to go after is Controller, and so Controller is a villain who can literally just cre- he creates devices that take over mm-hmm. people's minds, and Tony and Rhodey 
decided to go to this massage parlor. It, it looks like just a normal massage parlor. And so Tony walks in with his suitcase and Rhodey right behind him. And they're just like, yeah, we're just going to make ourselves at home. And so they walk in and the lady at the front desk is like, you can't go in there. Like, you're not, it's not available. So they just walk on in. And then all the these, like, young, like, you know, physically fit people start coming in. And they're, the look on their face shows that they're not fully there. Something is mm. taking over their mind. And they're obviously being controlled by the controller. And so Tony's like, Rody, hold him off while I put my suit on. <laughs> and so Tony goes into another room <laughs> and opens the suitcase and starts just putting his suit on. And then Rody, he just leaves Rody with like 20 different guys. And all Rody has is just a gun. But obviously he's yeah. not going to shoot anybody. <laughs> so he has to hold off 20 guys while this guy puts he, his armor on. That's got to take and a little bit of time. <laughs> it really yeah, does for you to put each piece on like your bicep I mean, your forearms your hands yeah like this is, and then you finish yeah, off everybody the needs to remember like, this is not MCU Iron Man where <laughs> he pushes a button on his arm or whatever and then everything just shows up <laughs> like this man has a, a suitcase full of the stuff that he has to put together and then so he he comes out of the room uh, and then he starts fighting these guys, and the controller shows up. And then controller is trying to fight Iron Man while these, you know, my control people are fighting them. And in the bat in the fight, um, one of the my control people uh, has his neck broken just mm-hmm. by accident. Um, and Tony realizes that another person has died because of him, and so he loses it, and he grabs controller they fly out of the building onto the beach and tony's just like laying into him just punch after punch after punch knocking him out and he finally puts the uh, neutralizer device on them and destroys the technology that the controller is using and so after that he leaves controller's done uh and while tony was taking out the villains who were using his tech he was hoping that his lawyer was able to uh, you know, sue these, sue Hammer and everybody uh, mm-hmm. in the courts, you know, and take care of it on that aspect. Um, but unfortunately, their neck, their case isn't for like a whole <laughs> another year. So, <laughs> Tony, one, one, he's one for, you know, wanting things done right away. And I mean, you can kind of understand like the quicker this is done, the quicker they can go back to yeah. normal. But uh, his lawyer's like, yeah, I got you a case, or I got you a date in the courts a year from now. And Tony's like, you're no use. You're, Imagine if he was like... <laughs> you're, you're useless, right. you're stupid. Okay. We'll just wait. <laughs> and, then that's, and then they just yeah, completely drop no. the story there and then don't come back to it for a year. <laughs> Armor War, part two. <laughs> and then all of it, the whole issue is just a court case. It's all done in real time. <laughs> and so at this point that's the end of that issue uh tony's taking out three villains so far but there's still plenty more to come he should have been and taking so, notes on issue everybody that he 226 because i mean they're using this technology for some pretty cool stuff he could be using this i know you, you can incorporate that into yeah. his own suits and i don't know man. yeah he there's something he did where i was just like this is pretty stupid. <laughs> I forgot what issue it was, but hopefully we'll, we'll run into it. And so it's issue 226. Uh, Stark is still on his quest to rid the world of his stolen tech. Uh, he stops a uh, three-villain team. I forgot their name. I forgot to write it down. But it's basically three dudes that are on the same suit. Um, they hijack a U.S. Air Force plane that has a bunch of like high-tech weaponry and stuff on it. Um, and so... They hijack that. They throw one guy out the plane. Or when they bust into the plane, uh, all the pressure and everything, it sucks one of the guys out. And they're just like, cool. Like, now we only got one dude to worry about. No one's going to stop us. And then, luckily, Iron Man comes in and he actually saved the guy and brought him back on the plane. Uh, there's a big fight that happens. He takes each guy out one by one uh, and then puts the neutralizer device on each of them 
and rids them of their of their tech. Um, dun, dun, dun. And so, like I mentioned earlier, Tony's still not running his company. He's still letting everybody kind of handle their own shit. But everyone is like, dude, like, we need your help. Like, <laughs> there's a bunch of, like, PR stuff that needs to be handled. We need help with, like, your, your litigation. This company is still kind of, like, in trouble with the military. <laughs> so, like, what do you want us to do? And you just sort of just, like, I don't know. You guys yeah, handle it. Know. That's not my job. And then... <laughs> and then we find out that uh abe gives him a call and he's just like hey uh i kind of need to see you right now and tony's like all right cool everyone deal with your own problems i gotta go talk to this guy real quick so he goes there and then abe tells him that somehow some way one of the names was deleted from the list of people with mm. his technology so with that that means that even if he is to neutralize everyone else there's still a chance that this technology can be out there and just be replicated from there on out. So he, he, they have to find this name some way. Um, and just and then the West Coast Avengers call Tony and they're like, hey, bud, like, what's going on? We saw that you've <laughs> been kind of aggressive. And something I don't understand with this is, like, they call him and they're like, hey, you're being a vigilante out there. Like, what's going on? Like, isn't he already yeah, a vigilante? You guys, <laughs> you guys are, like, this isn't a, a government sanctioned thing. Like, all of you guys yeah. are vigilantes. And, like, Hawkeye tells him that. He's like, yeah, we see that you're being a vigilante. And then he's just like, I'm just doing what we're, what we're supposed to do, taking on the bad guys. So I'm just like, okay, so what's the big deal that's <laughs> going on? He's doing what you guys are supposed to be doing. That's it. And but and then so yeah, he, he's talking to the West Coast Avengers, but he doesn't tell them what's going on. You and I, at this point I don't you understand have a whole why. Team of people that you work with and they're like, Hey, what's going on? Let us help you out. He's like, Nah, I can Like if if there's anybody It's not even a secret. You can just trust them. Yeah. Like I'm, I can't remember, but I'm pretty sure the team knows who he is. Yeah, they they know. So just he's give Tony. everybody the list, split it up, and and finish this shit. Like, why are you doing <laughs> this? You're making this way more difficult. In in one of the issues, they they do like a little exposition on you know to catch everybody up, but it it just makes it even more confusing. Um. Yeah, so he... Oh, yeah, so he... The next person on his list, so after he's done talking to the Avengers, the next person on his list is someone named Stingray. And Stingray is a government-sanctioned hero, um, and he's pretty much protecting uh, an an island that the Avengers use as, like, a headquarters. But because the Avengers aren't there, he's just kind of the only person there. And so Tony is like, okay, if I go get this guy's i obviously can't fight him you know it's like he's government sanctioned like that'll be public suicide or whatever and so he he goes there and he's just like hey i need to i need to borrow (laughs) your armor real quick and stingray's like well this is government property i can't just give it to you and the tony's like all right well i guess we'll just fight so then they have this big fight through the water and everything and tony comes out on top uh, he pretty much destroys the armor with his device. And then the, obviously because it's a government sanctioned hero, everybody knows about it. Now, Iron Man attacked the government sanctioned hero. Iron Man's a vigilante. He's, he's doing wrong by, you know, what everyone thought he was doing. And because people still think that Tony and Iron Man are separate people, uh, when, Tony comes back to Stark Industries or Enterprises. There's like, what's going on with your dude? Like, he's taking out all these villains. Now he's going after government sanctioned people. Like, what's going on? And Tony's just like, well, well, they call a press conference. We'll, we'll talk about it. So he calls a press conference and then he fires Iron Man as his bodyguard. No longer a Stark employee. He's done. You never work in this here. town again, buddy. Come back. <laughs> I can't believe you would do this. What's really... (laughs) 
it's funny because it's like they treat Iron Man like he's literally like he was born Iron Man, like he was just came out as. It's like that's just a, a man in armor. Anybody could be Iron Man at this point. Just hire someone else what's, who's gonna be. <laughs> what's funny to me is that like <laughs> he's technically an employee of Stark Enterprises, right? But nobody yeah. ever, nobody in HR or payroll ever is like, who's paying this guy? <laughs> like, where's his paycheck? Yeah, no one, the IRS isn't like, hey, if you're not paying this guy through your payroll, yeah. like, <laughs> where's his pay? Are yeah, you paying him out of pocket? Like, is it under the table type of stuff? Like, who are you he's paying? Like, he's not doing it's this just free. Like, no, it's just this entity that yeah. is just there. <laughs> And plus, he he's a Stark employee, but he's also on an Avengers team. Like, <laughs> yeah, a lot of you guys have stuff to answer for. That doesn't come out weird. <laughs> no one's questioning why this guy is also a private employee and on a superhero team. No one else is a private employee Somebody. for anyone else. Somebody has the answers here, but and so yeah, that's the end of two twenty six. They he fires Iron Man. And then 227, uh, Stark finds his next target, which is the Beetle, um, classically a Spider-Man villain, uh, literally just a guy in a suit of armor that kind of looks like a, not, doesn't really look like a Beetle, but he has like all the same powers. He can shoot lasers, fly, yeah. all this other stuff. Um, Stark takes him out pretty quickly uh, and very aggressive with him. And he, he'll he's starting to become more and more aggressive with the villains that he's taking out just because he wants this just, mm. just to be over with. Um, and he's just tired of people stealing his technology at this point. So he just becomes more and more aggressive, which peop, uh, normal citizens are noticing, and they're starting to become more concerned with who this guy really is. Why is he, you know, almost mm. killing these people? And obviously Stark hasn't told anybody uh what his plan is so it's even more confusing to even the people yeah, who know not, who he like, is these because people now know that he's who just... you are <laughs> your, your friends are on this team just tell them what's going on so at least you have people that can vouch for and Rody, Rody, yeah Rody is the, literally the only one who knows the plan of ever, all of this and yet he doesn't speak up at all he just is like alright all right. chief okay ch- what's going on chief where, where are we going chief, chief? It's like, dude, you... <laughs> and then, uh, again, the Avengers are like, Tony, what's going on? You're you're being a little aggressive, and you just fired yourself <laughs> from your own company. <laughs> and he's just like, oh, he's like, you guys will find out eventually, but I just got to handle this one on my own. And then they're just like, okay. And then he goes back to Stark Enterprises, and he's met by Nick Fury. And Nick Fury is also getting upset because Iron Man's being super aggressive and taking out all these people on his own time. <laughs> and so he's like, hey, uh, this guy's your employee, or he was your employee, but now he's wanted by the government. So either tell us where he's at or, you know, we're going to have to find him ourselves. And you're going to be responsible. And so Tony's like, okay, I'll help you find him. His name is Randall Pierce. <laughs> and then they're like, Randall Pierce? And he hands him a file with Randall Pierce and all his information and everything. And at some point, uh, when Tony decided to keep Iron Man and uh, himself separate, he created this false identity and it had them implanted in, like, Social Security office and, like, government offices and, and everything. Answer. So if this ever happened, <laughs> if this ever happened, they would just be looking for this non-existent person. And so, <laughs> so Fury's like, all right, cool. Like, where is this guy? And Tony tells him, oh, I think he might be held up in one of my safe houses. Um, I can help you get him if you want. And then Fury's like, yeah, sure. Like, you're going to help us. You know, we'll take care of this guy and so on and so on. And so Tony's like, cool, this is my chance, because he also knows that S.H.I.E.L.D. is using his technology in their their mandroid uh, mm-hmm. armors. And so Tony's like, all right, I'm going to use this as an opportunity to get in there, get close to all these mandroids, and then destroy them from the inside. And so 
uh, S.H.I.E.L.D. is basically telling Tony all of the plans, like the layout, what they're going to do, where everybody's going to be, which makes it super easy for Tony because he's like, cool, um, you know, here's the house, here's the safe house that he's at. It has all this, you know, extra stuff, blah, blah, blah. And so he really Iron Man just flies in there and is just like taking them out super easily. And then after all the battle, uh, he meets back up with Fury, and Fury is kind of suspicious now. He's like, "How did Iron Man know that we were going to be there with that many uh, mandroids? He knew all of our plans." Like, kind of makes me feel like you're 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 playing both sides here. And Tony's like, "That's ridiculous! Like, how am I supposed to play both I sides?" Never. And he, <laughs> and in order to throw the Fury off of his trail, he makes it seem like there's a bug at a shield office at headquarters so he he drops something off one of the computers and be like oh look at this it's a microphone like it seems like you guys were the ones who had had someone infiltrate your your headquarters and it wasn't me obviously i'm trying to capture iron man and that is what throws them off and he's able to take out all the all the mandroids surprisingly it's like they brought their whole supply of androids. <laughs> this, this unlimited government agency only has six of them, and they're just like, yeah, we brought all of them, and yeah, they're all destroyed. <laughs> it's, uh... And so Tony was able to get that get that done, and that's the end of 227. 228? Um, well, actually, 227 ended with uh, Steve Rogers showing up. And he was asking Tony for help. He needs a shield. Oh, boy. And so in this issue, 228, we find out that um, Steve Rogers is no longer Captain America. He was That was taken from him. So he's wearing the normal um, U.S. agent outfit, the black with uh-huh. the red and white. He's wearing that outfit, but he doesn't have a shield. And... He, He's wearing the the outfit and just a trench coat. <laughs> so <laughs> he's just walking down the street, just in this the superhero costume and a in a trench coat <laughs> and no mask, and it's just like <laughs> good yeah. disguise, bud. And so he he asked Tony for help with the shield because yeah he he doesn't have a shield, but he needs to get back on on the grind like. He's not going to let his country fall to the to the wayside and become number two to to China oh, man, and Russia. Get back out there, man! <laughs> America's I number get one. Get back out there and fight. <laughs> My country's falling. <laughs> so, <laughs> so Tony's like, "Yeah, I'll help y'all, bud. Like, um, I'll give you the shield and everything." And so they're having like their moment, but Tony's like, his real motive is like, if I give him the shield, he'll be more likely not to bother me. Because I need to go to this prison and destroy the suits that they have there because they're using the technology. If I give Steve the shield, then he'll be like, damn, Tony just helped me. I can't bother him now. You know? (laughs) You gave a broken man his power back. (laughs) And so he helps Steve out. Steve goes along along his way. And then Tony and Rhodey are like, all right, our next plan is to break into this prison. All the guards, literally every, all the guards in this prison use suits of armor that have this technology. And so Tony's like, all right, we'll just head to the prison and sneak in and we'll be good. And so on their way there, they stop at a diner and they're eating food. And Tony stops eating because he recognizes somebody in the diner. And he walks over to the person and we find out that it's Steve Rogers. And Steve had tracked them to this diner, and Tony's like, what are you doing here? And he's like, well, I'm not <laughs> stupid. Like, I, I I saw what happened with S.H.I.E.L.D. I saw what happened with these other, you know, armored people. It just makes sense that you would <laughs> end up here, you know, where there's this prison with armored people. And Steve's like, I have to ask you not to do this. And Tony's like, well, I have to ask you not to give a, <laughs> give a fuck because I'm going to do it anyways. <laughs> and then Steve, Steve's just like, he's like, if, if you do this, I'm going to have to stop you. And Tony's like, well, okay, I won't do it then. So then he leaves. 
And he tells Rowdy, okay, we have to change plans. Like, this isn't going to work. So then we cut to the city, and Electro's there. Spider-Man's villain, Electro. He's there. And he was supposed to be transferred to this prison that Tony and Rowdy were supposed to go to. Um, but he escaped, and he's now in this town just destroying everything and causing chaos. Uh, and then he gets neutralized by the soldiers from the prison. They come and grab him. And then they throw him in his prison cell. And they're like, okay, this is such a high-tech prison. These cells, they're lasers. And they allow anybody to walk through them and l- unless your DNA is a DNA coded to the laser. So you and I can walk through them. But Electro can't walk through the cells because his DNA is coded to the, okay. the lasers. But what they don't know is that that's not Electro. It's really Rhodey in Whiteface. And so he takes off his costume, and he has just... (laughs) He has Caucasian makeup around his mouth. He already Um, looks like a a white man with blackface. (laughs) Though every... Whoever was drawing this whole thing made him look like a white man in blackface the whole time. Except for like three or four panels <laughs> in every book. And now they're going to make him look like a white guy? <laughs> so whoever drew this, they all look the same. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so, because it's Rhodey and not Electro, he's able to slip through the, the gates. And his plan is to... They're going to fill the the whole prison with this like gas that's supposed to knock everybody out. And so he has to get, Rhodey has to make his way through the prison and get to a a panel where he can let Iron Man in um, without being detected, which is going to come in through like some storm drain or something. And so Rhodey makes his way through, he opens the storm drain, Iron Man flies through, but he's also being tailed by um, Steve Rogers. And so he's being tailed. Rhodey's being attacked by these armored people, but the gas is starting to flow through, so a lot of them are able to be, you know, taken out pretty easily. Um, and with all of them being taken out, Tony starts putting the devices on there to neutralize the armor, and then Steve shows up, and he's like, I can't let you do this, Tony. Like, these are good men. These are, like, what you're doing is wrong. And Tony could easily explain it to steve but he's like no nah, i'm cool like get, get out of my way before i mess you up i don't get it <laughs> and so uh steve he starts breathing in this gas and then he starts becoming like less and less himself and then he's knocked out and but like in the last breath he's sort of just like if you do this tony like i'll never trust you again like we're over this is like pre-civil war stuff almost and Tony's like, I got to do what I got to do, man. And so he leaves Steve, him and Rhodey leave. And that's the end of that. So at this point, I think Tony's taking out like, what? Five or six mm-hmm. different people with his, with his tech. So he's getting, he's it's, getting closer and closer. Because I didn't make it this far goal. in the story. Is Rhodey in his war machine stuff? Just with a gun? No. He's literally just the guy in the chair. Yeah. He just flies Tony around and drives him around and calls him (laughs) chief. And then issue 229, uh, Tony finally tells the West Coast Avengers what's been going on. And he tells them he didn't ask for help because he was afraid that they would help. I don't know what that means. I guess he was just so ashamed that people were dying due to his technology being in the wrong hands that he wanted to take care of it himself and not involve anybody else. Yeah. I don't know. It didn't really make sense to me. Um, (laughs) And so the next people on his target are Crimson Dynamo and Titanium Man. Um, Both are actually Russian Mm -hmm. villains. Well, I guess to Americans, they're villains. To Russians, they're heroes. But isn't that just life? It always goes. Um, 
<laughs> and so he knows he needs to take out both of them, but obviously they're not going to come to the United States. They're they're going to be in Russia, and he can't go to Russia because then that would be a whole like national security problem. And so his plan, uh, the Russians are actually aware that. Iron Man is going after armored people. So they're just like, hey, uh, you know, comrades, <laughs> just if he, if he does show up, you guys will protect us. You guys are like the best. Don't worry about it. Iron Man's nothing. America is nothing. We got you guys. And the Titanium Man is like, you know what? I don't need any of you. You guys are always just trying to take my suit anyway. So I'm going to go protect myself in my hidden <laughs> bunker. And then you guys can take take care of yourself. And so after Titanium Man leaves, the Russians, because uh, Crimson Dynamo is more of like a like a government sanctioned hero. Titanium Man is more just like I'm Russian, and that's why I'm here. He's not really doesn't really have ties to them other than just being Russian. And so uh, the Russian government tells Crimson Dynamo that they know. Iron Man's going to come looking for them, and they already know where Titanium Man is, and so does Iron Man, so they're going to just let those two fight it out, and whoever wins out of them, Crimson Dynamo is just going to come in and take that person out. And so they're just like, we'll just take everybody out, we'll be number one, it's all good. Back in America, Tony... He knows because it is a national security risk of mm-hmm. going to Russia. He has to use his stealth armor, and so he can't use his normal. Uh, I think he has his silver cent- centurion mm-hmm. armor right now, the yeah. r- red and silver. So he has to use his stealth armor. So he upgrades that and everything, and he tells Rhodey like, "All right, be ready at this time. Meet me at uh, Stark Enterprise headquarters. We'll we'll head off there." To Russia and we'll take care of this. this the whole time? But he knows his, his mission. <laughs> he knows his missions are getting more and more risky. And if he brings Rhodey, like, there's a chance that he may not make it back. There's no way he can protect him over there. So he tells Rhodey to meet him at Dark Enterprises at this time. But then, while well, he's been working on a stealth armor, he's also been working on, like, a jetpack, a yeah. rocket propulsion, like, backpack for his armor. Because his stealth armor is so, like, it's way less powerful than all of his other armor. So he can't fly as far either. So he has to use this rocket-propelled, like, backpack to basically rocket him into the upper atmosphere. And then kind of use, like, Earth's trajectory and everything to get him to Russia. And so he leaves Rhodey. He gets to Russia. Um... He found Titanium Man because apparently his hidden base isn't so hidden. He bursts in through the roof and he he has upper hand because he, he has an element of surprise. But as he's trying to put the device on there to neutralize his armor, he Titanium Man just crushes it. And he's like, nah, like that's not how it's going to work right now, bud. He's like, you're in my home now. <laughs> So he starts like just laying into him because his armor is obviously not as strong as Titanium Man. So he's just like getting his ass kicked, and then uh, Crimson Dynamo is like, or the Russians are like, okay, Iron Man's here. Crimson Dynamo, go over there and like just kind of watch and see how things are going, and then obviously take out whoever is left. Um, but what Crimson Dynamo doesn't know is that Titanium Man had a like. Uh, security system that would pretty much just shoot down any you know jets or titan or flying armor people that came in uh but obviously tony's armor was stealth proof so it was able to get bypass all that stuff uh crimson dynamo didn't know that so he gets shot down and then the fight with titanium man and iron man gets taken outside and uh crimson dynamo is trying to like join in and take care of Iron Man, but then he gets his ass kicked pretty quickly. And then Iron Man neutralizes his armor, like, not even two seconds after. He just gets laid out, and then armor neutralized, like, no more. And then the there's, like, a Russian army that shows up. And Tony still can't get the upper hand on Titanium Man. He's still just kicking his ass. 
and but he has one trick where he can turn his armor white so from black to white and so that makes him harder to see in the snow so he's able to kind of like dodge a lot of the attacks and kind of sneak up on them and that worked for a little bit but then when the russian army shows up he has to deal with them plus uh titanium man and so he has one more trick up his sleeve so he grabs titanium man and he starts flying up into the air but he's flying up so fast and using so much energy that uh his rocket boosters they're not burning like red or orange or anything they're burning like white like super hot and so his his plan is to basically get titanium man's armor to the point of combustion and so he he's able to do that which causes the armor titanium man to fall from the sky on fire pretty much and then when he hits the ground he explodes and he's taken care of and so tony leaves he took care of one more uh villain but this is all over the news and everything now so at this point uh Tony makes it back home, and the Avengers are like, you got fired from your own company. You fired yourself. The government's after you. Uh, you you took out a government agent. You went into restricted a restricted country, and you're you know on this one man vigilante train. Like, uh, you know, you know, we can't have this. So they kick him out of the Avengers at this time as well too. So at this point, he's not an Avenger. He's a government criminal. He's a criminal for, against Russia. He's about to lose his company. All of this just to save his tech, or get his technology out of the hands of other people. That's a lot. It's all for the cause. Yes, but <laughs> you're not going to have much to go back to after this. <laughs> okay, and so... Uh, two thirty. Um, <laughs> where am I? Oh yeah, the U.S. government. Um, they now have like their own armored Avenger type thing. Uh, it's really he looks sort of like uh, what was his name? Who was the villain in Iron Man one? Um, it was Obadiah Stane, Iron Monger. Yeah. Um, the U.S. military, they have their own armored person named Firepower, and he sort of looks like Ironmonger, but he has a bunch of rockets and nukes and guns just, like, strapped to his back. And so he's he's pretty much Stark's, like, last, like, person. And so, um, but he's his last person, but he was designed not by Tony Stark or the military. He's designed by another industrialist, like, a rival to Stark. So he sold his tech to the military, and now uh, they're using it. And so in, in, during the fight with Firepower, um, he easily overpowers Iron Man, like, without any question. Like, Tony is just no match for this guy. And then uh, he gets super, like, injured because he shoots a missile at him, and the missile, like, he can't shake it. And the only way he can really take care of it is just mm. to let it hit him. And so everyone thinks Iron Man's dead after this. But really, it's just... Stark is hurt, but he just has, like, a puffy eye and, like, a, a, a scratch on his face. Like, he doesn't look that hurt. And and so... Uh, do, 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 do. Oh, yeah. And so he's badly injured, and uh, to make matters worse, when firepower... Uh, when his armor is revealed, uh, it's shielded from any of uh, Tony's, like, of his devices mm. that neutralize armor. So even if he could get it on there, it's, it wouldn't do anything at all. And so Tony fakes, uh, like I said, he faked his death in the Iron Man armor. And then following that, uh, Edwin Cord, he's the, the rival who created the armor. He uses the armor to conduct uh, acts of... Uh, economic terrorism so meaning he's just blowing shit up and then <laughs> just for just capital gain um 
And then he attacks Stark Enterprises in revenge for uh, Stark taking over uh, his his business beforehand. And then Tony Rizzi doesn't he doesn't he creates a new suit, uh, hoping that everything that he's learned and everything that he got from all the other mm-hmm. uh, armored people that he he can put it into this new suit. Um, da, da, da. Yeah, and so he realizes that he doesn't really want to build the armor, but he realizes that it's the only way to take care of this firepower guy. Like, because he has to build a whole new suit of armor from scratch, which means he has to build new technology, which means this is could all happen all over again. And but he's just like the risk is just too great for us to not mm-hmm. take care of firepower. And so him and firepower have a fight. And then he's able to take him out, no problem, even though Firepower is like, you're not supposed to be able to get in here. And he's like, I'm Iron Man, bitch. That was his catchphrase. And then, yeah, <laughs> he's like, I'm, work- I'm workshopping new titles or new catchphrases. The, the, the vigilante How's Iron this Man. one? I'm Iron Man, bitch. <laughs> and so that's the, the end of that issue and then the last issue the epilogue um so essentially yeah that's that's pretty much that the next issue doesn't really have anything to do with Mm -hmm. armor wars tony is having like this weird dream where like his armor is coming alive and it's like taking over him and becoming part of him and this whole stuff but it doesn't really have anything to do with armor wars but yeah, that's pretty much the last issue. He essentially takes out the last final boss, and his technology is covered. All right. Um, I mean, it wasn't bad. No, it wasn't bad, but it was kind of yeah. stupid. There was. <laughs> it was. Yeah, all he had to do was just ask for help. He would have avoided a lot of this. And imagine going yeah. to firepower with just like, say, "Hey, your Avengers team." Like, yeah, it would have been so much easier. I mean, but I I kind of get it. What I did like about it is like, now I kind of understand the character of Tony Stark. Like, he is very he he. It's almost like he has OCD or like. He just becomes super obsessed yeah. with like one thing. Like if it gets in his head, mm-hmm. he has to do it, and he has to, which is like kind of cool to see in the books because that's what happened in the movies, right? Like he became obsessed with everything, and that's how he like, built Ultron and like everything. So it's just kind of cool to kind of see that aspect of the character kind of mm-hmm. on the page. And so I thought that was kind of cool. Yeah, no, that is that is a cool part of it. I've been trying to pay more attention to like character traits like that when I'm reading stuff um, just to, mm-hmm. uh, cause I've kind of realized that like Spider-Man is like I'm, I'm pretty sure Spider-Man uh, influenced like millennials to a T like <laughs> it doesn't take anything seriously Always beating himself up about stuff that happened 15, 20 years ago. No matter what trouble he's in, he's going to find some way to make a joke out of it. Like, <laughs> it, But yeah, it, it, it's cool to... Like, yeah, that makes sense. To, to actually like see it. See a different character. Uh, yeah, he, I mean, he was just obsessed with, with fixing a problem that he caused. Yeah, so, um, but I, I there, there's a there's an armor wars Even though, too, so I'm mean, I'm interested to to figure out what's gonna happen in that part. <laughs> I just feel like like it it starts off with like not oh, again. <laughs> <laughs> the government just started to like me again. I I thought it was gonna be more. Um, I did think it was going to be more corporate-based, like, because, um, like, in the shows, like, 
he's really going after like Justin Hammer and like other companies mm-hmm. that had built it or built stuff with his technology. So I, before I yeah. started, I did think it was going to be more of like a, a like a, him just going after the corporation. Um, yeah. And the only thing that was confusing to me was just um, just because he r- destroyed the armors, like, they don't have any, they have no knowledge of <laughs> of how to build it anymore. Oh, I, I, I guess I kind of glossed, I, I skipped that part, but he did create, like, a device that, um, it, like, sort of, it's like a computer virus, and so it infects, I guess they send it out to, like, mm-hmm. a few people, but it constantly just kind of keeps recreating itself and so it's on every computer system in the world and it doesn't do anything except for delete the files on how to create the armor that makes sense yeah yeah so he he, he's covered (laughs) in that aspect uh but it was kind of there was some stupid parts in there but i liked it so i'm gonna give it a yeah it wasn't it wasn't too bad yeah, I got the right one this time. <laughs> I'll give it a house right. explosion too. Ooh, I gotta turn that down in editing. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, that was I thought it was a good story. I, I am really interested in figuring out what happens in Armor Wars two. Um, I think that episode's probably that episode's not coming out for a while. I I want to say. No, I want to say it might be next year or like later this year, but mm. it's going to be a while. But uh, yeah, that was, that was it. That's all we got for this week. Thanks for hanging out. Thanks for kicking it. Hope yeah. you guys enjoyed. We've, uh, we've been getting some more listens on episodes, so thanks for sharing with your, your friends, your family, your your nephews, your niece, whoever you're sharing it with, your boss, whatever. Thanks for sharing it. I'm still waiting for people to to reach yeah, out. That's I like try to add me on. Can you send messages to people you don't know on Instagram? Uh like that you're not friends with? You know, like if you're not friends or anything. Uh, yeah. I I'm sure you can. It happens to celebrities all the time. Um, oh, true, true. But I, I don't know. It, I guess maybe it depends on if your page is private or something. Because I, I think you can, like, for you, you can set. There's a setting, I think, that you can set to so people have to be your friend to send you a message. So mm-hmm. um, maybe that, I don't know. I don't know if that setting is on for you or not, but. I don't know. My page is private, so I don't know. I only ask. Yeah, I only ask just because I'm like, what if people have been trying to add me and like, yeah, because I've been getting a lot of like spam ads. I think that sometimes too, because sometimes I'll get added by like pages that like aren't actually spam pages. Like they're they're posting stuff like yeah. it's actual people. Like they don't have like they're not following twenty thousand people and. They're only followed by two or whatever. Like, yeah. And then I'm like, oh, but I don't know this person, and nobody said anything to me, so I don't. Know. <laughs> Are they actually a fan of the show, or is it just a random person? Yeah, I know. I keep saying this every week and giving like new rules, but if you're going to add me on Instagram, if possible, send me yeah. a message <laughs> first, just saying, "Hey, coming from or the even, show." Yeah. Just want to add you on Instagram. Just go to the the Webheads podcast on Instagram and add us there. Yeah, because if I see if I see you're following the the, the show podcast, then I'll be like, yeah. okay, coming from the Something. show. That makes sense. But uh, what was I going to say? Oh yeah, just just give us those ratings on Spotify, uh, Apple Podcasts, where our podcast is literally almost everywhere that you can get podcasts iHeartRadio, 
um, YouTube. Yeah, you literally yeah, can't avoid wherever it. Wherever you listen to something, it's there. Even follow us on YouTube. It's I mean, we we're just posting the audios on there still. Um, but I, uh, some people like our father, for some reason, only listen on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know why, but we're there. So give us check us out. Give us a follow. Uh, go give us a, a thumbs up on those on those videos or the audios on YouTube. And yeah, that's it. We will be back next week with another. Uh, oh, next week we got an X Men story. Da, na, 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 na. You we gotta play that every time we say X Men or anything mutant related, or we just gotta play yeah, that little. little. <laughs> I gotta find the one from uh, from Miss Marvel, and then uh, yeah, is it the, was that the same one that was in Multiverse of Madness? Okay. I don't think it was the same one. It's the one in Multiverse of Madness yeah. was more clear. Like when I heard the one on Miss Marvel, I didn't fully hear it as an X as X Men tune, and so I like started reading, and then I heard it again. I was like, oh. Okay. I was surprised when I saw the end credits on uh, Doctor Strange, because everybody like people online kept saying, oh, it's the X Men ninety two theme, X Men ninety two theme. That's so cool, or whatever. And then in the credits, it says X Men ninety seven theme. Yeah. Oh, from the show. So. Interesting. I, I think I tried to comment on a few yeah. pages that were talking about it. But nobody, <laughs> nobody responded to my comments. So <laughs> you gotta put it on Reddit. Hey, did anybody notice this is X Men ninety seven theme? And then watch it. <laughs> That'll be the one post that nobody comments on that day. <laughs> All right, man. That, thanks for hanging out again. Thanks for giving us that story. That that good Iron Man story. <laughs> that good Iron Man story. <laughs> we will, like I said, again, we'll be back next week. Peace. Bye. Bye.